you know, Liz Ann said she's not necessarily recommending buying value indexes. Maybe you are. I understand you're a value investor. Can you give us some opportunity? Help us find silver linings in today's sell-off so some of our viewers perhaps, perhaps can make the most of today and make a little bit of money. Well, Courtney, uh, first of all, Liz Ann is absolutely correct. And, and our whole philosophy is when buying value all the time and buy quality and hang on to it. And I don't really care if it's bonds, if it's housing, if it's rentals, if it's the stock market, whatever. If you buy quality, you're going to be fine over time. You look at the market, and it's down a 1,000 points today. And I think the whole idea here, Courtney, is to have people just sit back, take a big breath, and look at the reality of the situation. Because I'm looking at this market like a shake-and-bake market. You put chicken in a Ziploc bag, you shake it up with the spices, and then you put it on. But the same thing is happening here. All the headlines over the last three to six months are being cut out, put in a Ziploc bag, shaked, uh, shook up, and then they're picking one out every day. I don't know what changed in inflation from yesterday to today. I don't understand what how Powell's remarks yesterday changed from to today. But I look at it that if there's plenty of quality out there, but there's plenty of excuses. It can be inflation. It can be employment. It can be the supply chain. It can be interest rates. It can be whatever. But there are excuses because the banking system in the strongest position has been since the Depression, in my opinion. The, co the cust consumer is back. They're back at concerts. They're back at the stadiums. The airlines are full. The gyms are full. People have tons of money on the sidelines to spend. So I'm not sure what the whole shakeup in here is, except you had growth that was way overvalued. If you're going to pay 10 times on a price of sales, then you should get hurt when the game's over. But if you're going to pay a dollar for a dollar in sales, you're not going to get hurt. See, it's interesting, in the long Neil, term. To, it's interesting, Neil, to hear your thoughts on the consumer because we've heard from a number of consumer-facing companies recently in recent days, even just in the last 12 hours, and it seems like it all depends on the subcategory that you're serving for the consumer. If you're serving them online, things are not looking so good. Wayfair, Etsy, eBay, but Crocs had really good demand. Even Pennsylvania Real Estate Trust, which, of course, owns a number of malls, they said traffic is up 10% year-to-date. The consumer is strong, so you don't believe the consumer weakness or consumer worry is part of what's percolating under the surface in the market with the worries about inflation. You say they have enough money. Do they have enough to continue spending if inflation is at 8%? Well, I think the last time I was on CNBC, maybe three or four weeks ago, I was talking about the consumer and how it was going to slow down the spending online. People wanted to get out. They wanted to get into a store. They wanted to touch, feel, try on something. And that's essentially what's happening. The estimate out there, Courtney, right now is the consumer sitting on $2 trillion in cash. That's a lot of consumer spending that can go along. You've got S&P 500 companies are sitting over $5 trillion in cash. Companies are very, very strong cash-wise, and compared to debt, when you load it up against cash flow, it's one of the lowest it's been in years upon years upon years. So the economy's not in as bad shape as people think it is. I'm looking at the 10-year U.S. government yielding 3.1% and the 30-year U.S. government spending uh, yielding 32 Who would be the idiot to buy a 3.2 for 30 years? It doesn't make any sense. So essentially what you're going to see is people go back to value. Investors are going to buy companies that actually are cash flowing, paying dividends, have the reasonableness of growing, maybe not in the disruptive way that people want the companies to grow in some sectors, but continue to grow and raise the dividends. And that's where value is going to come back. We've seen it before, Courtney, in the late 90s. The NASDAQ in 99 was up 86%. Everybody was on growth. If it had dot-com next to it, you made money. And then 2001 and 02 came, and the market lost 45 percent, but value did not lose 45 percent. In fact, value damn near broke even, clear across the board.